in this video, we're going to reveal the truth about MSG. Does it cause headaches? Can it make you gain weight? Is it even safe? We've been hearing about a silent killer. It's a killer that's worse than alcohol, worse than nicotine, worse than drugs. It's called monosodium glutamate. Picture the scene. It's Friday night, you're enjoying your favorite Chinese, but soon after, you start to feel a bit strange. Was it the food? Or was it that curious salt light thing, MSG, that everyone keeps talking about? Could this be the Chinese restaurant syndrome? Back in 1968, the term Chinese restaurant syndrome first came to public attention when a letter appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine from a doctor claiming he experienced heart palpitation and flushes after eating in a Chinese restaurant and said it was due to the MSG in the food. Since then, MSG has got a bad rap. So if it's that bad, why is it so widely used in Asian cooking? Why does Uncle Roger rave about it? Where your MSG? You don't use MSG how to make good egg fried rice. This is just white people egg fried rice. MSG is the, the king of flavor. If you sad in life, use MSG. If you happy in life, use MSG. Put MSG in everything. Stay tuned to find out my thoughts on it as a registered nutritionist. What is MSG? MSG is short for monosodium glutamate. It's made of two naturally occurring substances, sodium and glutamic acid, aka glutamate. You probably already know about sodium, but what about glutamic acid? Sciencey as it might sound, glutamic acid is simply an amino acid or a building block of protein that's found in our bodies. It's also naturally present in certain foods such as tomatoes, parmesan cheese, dried mushrooms, soy sauce, and a host of fruits and vegetables. The glutamic acid in MSG is made by fermenting starches, but there is no chemical differences between the glutamic acid in MSG and that in natural foods. MSG enhances the savory, meaty, umami flavor of foods. Umami is the fifth basic taste, along with salty, sour, bitter, and sweet. So is MSG safe? Fear of MSG dates as far back as 1968, and in 1969, a study found that injecting large doses of MSG in newborn mice caused harmful neurological effects. Since then, books like Russell Blaylock's Excitotoxins, The Taste That Kills, have kept this fear of MSG alive. Dr. Russell Blaylock has studied these common flavor enhancers that many experts believe are hazardous to your health. He calls them excitotoxins, the taste that kills. Glutamic acid functions as a neurotransmitter in your brain. It is an excitatory neurotransmitter, meaning that it stimulates nerve cells in order to relay its signal. It's true that increased glutamate activity in your brain can cause harm, and that large doses of MSG can raise blood levels of glutamate. In one study, a mega dose of MSG increased blood levels by 556%. However, in real life, dietary glutamate should have little to no effect on your brain as it cannot cross the blood-brain barrier in large amounts. In the 1990s, the FDA, that's the United States Food and Drug Administration, asked an independent scientific group to investigate. The group concluded that MSG is safe, though they said some sensitive people might get short-term symptoms like headache or drowsiness if they consume 3 grams or more of MSG. A typical serving of MSG in food is less than 0.5 grams. So it seems that MSG is safe. But does MSG cause weight gain? MSG has been studied for a possible connection with weight gain. One explanation is that MSG makes foods taste better, so you may eat more of it. Another is that the additive may disrupt hunger fullness hormones. In one study of more than 10,000 Chinese adults published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, those who ate the most MSG were 33% more likely to be overweight after five years compared to those who ate the least amount. But other research doesn't show this effect or shows the opposite. So we can't really conclude that it does cause weight gain. Could MSG actually be a good thing? On the flip side, there may be an unsung positive for MSG. Because it's so flavorful, it may actually help food manufacturers reduce the amount of sodium they would normally add to foods. 
Yes, MSG has sodium in its name, but MSG has two thirds less sodium compared to table salt. So it could be a nice seasoning to use if you're trying to cut back on sodium, especially since it can increase the depth of a dish by adding umami flavor. So should you use MSG? If you believe you have a sensitivity to MSG, by all means continue to avoid it. Although there's no real scientific evidence of a sensitivity, every person is different. Now let's find out where is MSG in food. If you are avoiding MSG, how do you know if a food contains it? According to the FDA, food with added MSG must list it in the ingredient panel as monosodium glutamate. You may find added MSG in foods like Chinese food, canned soups, frozen foods, fast food, packaged snacks, salad dressings, mayonnaise, cured meats, seasoning blends and bouillon cubes, cookies and crackers. It really can be in any packaged or processed food. MSG occurs naturally in certain food ingredients too, including hydrolyzed vegetable protein, autolyzed yeast, hydrolyzed yeast, yeast extracts, soy extracts, and protein isolates. If you're staying away from MSG, you should avoid products with those ingredients too. If you eat a diet that's overall low in highly processed foods, you'll naturally consume fewer of those ingredients. You can also look for the package claims, no MSG or no added MSG. Any food that contains MSG, either as monosodium glutamate or via one of those ingredients that I've just listed, cannot make those claims. The FDA also says MSG is not allowed to be listed as simply spices and flavoring in the ingredients list. Let's sum up with all things you should review. Evidence indicates that MSG is safe in moderate amounts. If you react adversely to MSG, you shouldn't eat it. That said, if you don't experience side effects, there's no compelling reason to avoid it. Keep in mind that MSG is generally found in processed, low quality foods, which you should avoid or limit anyway. If you already eat a balanced diet with plenty of whole foods, you shouldn't have to worry about high MSG intake. In the end, if you're one of those people who is MSG sensitive, it makes sense to avoid it. For everyone else, there's no need to stress about it. Do you use MSG or try to avoid it? Comment below. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button and subscribe to watch more videos just like this. Remember, enjoy food and stay happy and healthy. Catch you on the next one.